We've been working on the front porch makeover for our mobile home and the first thing to fix was the door. If you haven't seen part one of this makeover, check it out right here. There's a card on the top right on your screen. We fixed the door so it could close properly with a few tricks, added a new door lock and fixed a big hole on the door and we gave it a nice paint job with this beautiful dark green color. Hey guys, welcome to Susie Makes It. I'm so excited about this project that is coming right here. It's now time to start the railing makeover on a budget. Let's go. First things first guys, I had to take care of this lavender because it was going wild. And I didn't cut it all the way here, but I did it later because right there I was feeling a little bit guilty about chopping it all off. I also started taking off the wood pieces that were going vertically in the railing because my idea for this railing is to modernize it completely. I'm going to use some cable railing so that it can look nice and clean, but I will be using part of the wood that I'm taking off, mainly the one that's at the, at the very top there, to reuse it for the handle. That piece right there was screwed instead of with a nail, so it was giving me a little bit of a hard time. After demoing the wood railing and just leaving the main posts, I recruited my dad to help me with patching the holes left. The wood is old but still good, so we used our trusted bundle to make it nice and smooth. Um, un poco. ¿Es todas estos que están aquí, mire? Todos los que están ahí. Yes. Oh my gosh, you guys, there were so many holes. And another thing that we encountered was that it was so hot those days that the bundle was drying up super, super fast. And we only had a little bit of that drying agent and the bundle itself. So we had to try to work with the little product that we had and patch up however we could as fast as we could. Oh my gosh. We're gonna race against time because this is just drying up like crazy. Para allá, para allá, papi. O aquí arriba. Acá arriba, papi. Ay, ay, ay. Creo que es allá arriba. Ya se le secó. Uh, drying up. While my dad was fixing the railing there with the holes and he sanded and did all that, we worked with my mom in a really fun project that was going to be for some decorations for the entrance. And I have a lot of scrap wood, as you guys might know, um, and I used what I had. I had the red wood there and I made some pots. My mom made the, the little bench and she told me how to do it. She designed the whole thing. And then I just cut it, made it, and we had so much fun. And I realized that in the middle of all these things, you have to have some fun. So that's what we did, and I really enjoyed that time spent with my mom. Black is the color, guys, that we're painting the railing. I've been getting more and more comfortable with bolder, darker colors on my design. So we'll see how it goes, and you'll tell me what you think. So let me know in the comments if you like the darker colors better or if you're more on the lighter side of the colors. I used to like everything just white, plain, but now I'm getting more comfortable with both. I took a break and when I went back out, I felt like a complete savage and slightly scared to see only the post standing. I've never done cable railing before, so the stakes are high. Alright guys, this next part is a complete experiment. I have no idea if this is gonna work out. Cross your fingers, because I have an idea in my head and I hope I can translate it into making it happen. So this is the railing. And before, if you remember, we had all the, the crossed um, bars and then we had some slats that were going straight. So my idea is to modernize it, make it nice and use uh, cable railing to do that. 
the cable railing is a bit expensive so i want to do my own so diy my own and let's see what happens i'm gonna be using i already had this of course because i am a big crazy person <laughs> diy person so this is the first thing that i need to show you this is a crimping uh, tool which helps you to clamp the cable and these are the securing pieces and I'll show you how I do it but this is basically uh, what you would need the crimping tool and it depends on the size of your cable you're gonna have the size of your ferrule <laughs> that sounds so funny but my main thing is that how do you secure it um, so that it doesn't look too you know DIY and that it looks more professional I don't want to have big holes in the front where it shows um, like at the very beginning of the steps I don't want it to show that so what I'm gonna be using in the very beginning of it is gonna be these eye hooks these are tiny and they're gonna be minimum so that when I do my securing of the cable it's gonna go through here and then I'm just gonna run my cable with the high, eye, first eye hook over here and then cross it, move it so that it's minimum with the, with the eye hooks so that I don't have so many. And I'm just gonna run it through here, open holes with my drill and then move it over to end over here and have another eye hook. So I don't know if I should just do one run from here to this post and then just do an individual run from here to here having two eye hooks on either side or if I should run it all the way through which is going to be a little bit more complicated but um, and then have it over here end and over here and just have two eye hooks total we'll see I'm missing my box of cable <laughs> so I don't know where I put it I had it just a couple days ago so one of those things guys the other thing was the top what do I do about the top so first I thought okay I'm gonna do a handrail I'm gonna use the piece that I moved that I took off from the top that was on the side and put it on the top and make it nice stain it or paint it but then I started thinking if I'm gonna leave it bare I probably need something nicer which is gonna be like a redwood or a cedar because that's gonna look way nicer and the one that I took off is painted plus it's full of holes because of the screws nails and all the stuff that it's gotten through the years and uh, number two it's really in kind of like bad shape to d leave it just natural so my my solution for this is gonna be to paint it black I'm gonna cut it almost three quarters of the way because it's a two by four so I'm just gonna cut it where it's not as thick as this it's probably gonna be maybe a one and a half or something like that and I'm gonna run it through the middle not on top here on the surface but where it, it's going from the inside here in the middle to the other side here <laughs> this isn't my other side um, and then I'm just gonna attach it with a uh, crack jig. It's gonna be at the bottom. That's my solution. Hopefully it works out and it'll look nice and also very sleek. And what do you guys think? Do you think we can make it happen? I think it already looks so good though. I'm really excited. Ah! It was time to measure three times and only drill once guys because this is going to be it for drilling, putting the cable and making everything absolutely perfect. I have one shot for absolutely every single one of those railings that I'm going to install. To drill on the very first post that's at the bottom of the stairs, I started drilling straight and then went on a slight angle to follow the inclination of the stairs. Then I installed the eye screw and tried to tighten it as much as possible, sinking it into the wood 
and then I threaded the cable into the ferrule then went through the eye screw and back again through the ferrule then I tightened as much as possible and crimped everything making sure that everything was very secure For the second post, I had to drill through it so that I could get the cable through. So the first thing that I did was drill on one side, then I went to the other side, but the drill bit was too thin. So I ended up using a three and a half inch screw, which worked out great. It made the hole a little bit bigger, but the cable went through and I was able to thread it. I kept measuring and measuring everything to make sure that everything was exactly level because otherwise the cable would look really bad. So here I'm working on that corner post but you'll see later that it really didn't work out. I ended up patching the holes back again so that I could continue doing the same method that I had been doing on the other posts. Alrighty guys, so the whole thing of passing the cable through from here to here was a complete fail because once you try to get the cable here, it stops, but there's no way to fish it out the other way, so that didn't work out. So it's okay, we're gonna uh, do the little hook here. What I did to fix the, the hole because I had open the hole with my screw. Another thing that happened was that instead of using, well, I did use my drill, my drill bit, but this one is way better when you're going through at least the one here in the middle where it has to go through and through. So what I did was that I used my screw, which is three and a half inches long which is great because this is almost that. So I was just ran it through and it came out nicely. Um, so I'm gonna do that for all the ones that are here in the middle that it has to go, go through the post. But for this one that I had to fix, what I did because the hole was too, too big afterwards, I couldn't put the, the little eye hook because the thread here is so tiny that you have to have something where you can bite into the wood. So I use toothpicks. When you have something so little that you have to plug, use toothpicks. It helps out, then you just break them out, use your glue, and it's gonna be nice and solid. You gotta think outside the box always. That's what I try to do. <laughs> so this is the moment of truth. We're gonna see if my, my plan works. So I'm going to cut the cable here just enough so that I can loop and put my my little ferrule, what did we say it was called, ferrule? Yeah, this little thing that goes through. And then I'm not going to tighten the, the eye hook all the way because I'm going to turn it so that it can tighten as I as I go so I'm gonna tighten it just so that it can do another there and then I can still go another round another full circle so that it can tighten so I'm gonna cut it it's always better to cut it long and then I can cut it that should be enough this um, this tool has the the cutting part which is this one right here 
just put your your cable through the side and then crush together and it'll it'll cut it for you and there's two sides and then this part right here is where you're gonna smash the ferrule so that it secures the cable okay moment of truth guys wait first you have to put put it through the ferrule and then you're gonna thread it through the eye hook put it through the ferrule again the second part And tighten it as much as possible there I think that's gonna work out and then I'm gonna use my arrow to tighten this just as long as you do the first one you're good just gonna go just gonna do one and then using a screwdriver this is my I'm gonna thread it. I'm gonna turn it. It's nice. Nice and tight, guys. Okay, I think that's it. Then we can go back and do the, the hole. Just fix it with a little bit of paint. Make it nice. So I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna finish doing this. And then I clamp it on both sides. Or crimp it, crimp it. I'm gonna crimp it flat and then smush it. And then the excess, should I take out the excess? Maybe I should. I'm just gonna, just be careful not to take the whole thing off. That could happen. So I'm gonna take a little bit off, but not too much so that if anything happens, we can still. It worked, it worked. <laughs> my plant down here oh my gosh <laughs> oh, I'm happy look at this it is working guys it is working and it looks nice and clean it doesn't look you know clunky or anything like that this is how I ended this and I could probably go one more turn it around where this goes looking down and this uh, is for looking horizontal like that I think that looks better I'm gonna try to finish the whole run before I call my mom and dad and show them what I did now that the first run of the cable railing was done and I knew that it was possible, I got an extra oomph and I just kept going, kept measuring over and over again. Guys, I cannot stress how much it is important to measure the whole thing over and over to make sure that it's good. And I just marked everything in my posts to make sure that I was doing the right thing. My mom came out, so she busted my surprise, but it was okay. Thankfully, she was checking up on me, making sure that I hadn't dehydrated out there. I did a total of five runs of the cable railing, and I separated them, I believe it was like two and a half inches apart. In between doing the cable railings, I took a little break and went and worked on the pieces that are gonna be for the handrail the top so I didn't video this but I did use my heat gun to take off a lot of the paint because it was really gunky and stuck in there and then I just started sanding away I also repaired all the holes that were in the wood 
and I used plastic wood in this occasion which is not my favorite but I didn't want to buy a whole thing of Bondo which is like about $30 and opposed to the plastic wood it's only like about seven eight dollars for the little tub the next day I finished putting the handrail that was at the very top for the pieces that we were working on and I kept measuring again and again guys <laughs> I just had to make sure everything was good and let me tell you guys I was so so excited when I was putting these pieces because everything was coming together when I was installing the top rail I asked my mom to help me out and to push in lean into that post so that I could screw in the piece and it could be nice and secured the rest of the railing installation was just a repetition of everything we've done before which was putting those eye screws doing the cable railing with the ferrules and crimping everything making everything tight and just going from the bottom to the top and getting to that handrail installation. When I did the installation of the handrail where the stairs are, I had to correct the angle a little bit because I had put it a little bit higher and when you saw it from the front, it looked like it wasn't aligning to the handrail that's at the top of the stairs. So I had to take it off, put it back on again, correct it, lower it so that it could be a seamless line from the bottom to the very top. I worked well into the night just picking up all of the tools, everything that was scattered everywhere and then everything was already installed and done. So I had to do a take at night. I still had to do some more work the next day to put on up everything but doesn't that look amazing? This is the front area of the side patio, like the very entrance of it, that I need to take care of next. But I was trying to get out all of the leftover dirt from the side patio makeover that I did. I still had it there, guys. Yes. Sorry. It's a lot of things to do. So I took the opportunity to pick up everything. I got like nine bags of dirt out of there. My brother helped and then my dad was helping me take out all of the bags to the trash. So you can tell that there's some touch-ups to do over here uh, with the trim and also right here for the paint of the house. So I'm gonna do that. I have some extra paint and as I mentioned before, Oh my gosh, I'm gonna go fall. Um, there is extra paint that I have always at hand. That way I don't have to go buy another uh, quart or maybe a sample size. So whatever I have left over, I try to seal it well. And I have this um, for the white trim. I have my semi-gloss. It's for exterior. Both of them are exterior. And this one is in sleek white and the other one is the incognito and I always like to write them down also on my phone or in a piece of paper where I know I'll, I can come back uh, maybe a journal or something for my house so that I can do um, I can remind myself what colors I have and I don't have to be going back and forth looking for the colors
All right, guys, so we're ending this project. I still need to put oil on that door, though. Uh, we're ending this project here in the stairs of the main entrance. I am super excited because this has been a long time coming. Uh, we've had this house for four years, but only now have I been able to kind of like fully do a makeover here. And as you saw, I did the side patio um, makeover as well. And I still need to do the rest of the, the flagstone here in front uh, and also at the very end. But that's going to be a little bit easier than the one in the back. The one in the front is going to be a little bit more work. But I just wanted to do this uh, project, make it happen because I am entering that contest, contest. And today actually is the last day. So I hope I can make it. I have to go edit, I have to go do all the things that I need to do and then post it on TikTok. So I hope that you like this. This uh, project of doing the railing was really amazing and I'm so happy I did it because it totally transformed the, the whole entrance. The door color as well was something that I was um, kind of like debating because the first color when we came to the house, it wasn't really painted, it was all faded. It was kind of like a gray blue so that's why I did the blue door um, and then uh, the just the awning as well I'll be hopefully doing that video soon for you guys so you can see how you can do something like that it just makes it really warm and cozy and it's not your typical awning and I think that's it, it's an option if you if you want to do this also the railing looks really modern and really nice and then I did some little touches like we did the project with my mom where we did this little stool or riser it's a little riser and we did the I did the pots and also I added some other plants that I already had in that base like kind of like copper base and thankfully I got this rug from you won't believe it from the 99 cent store it was probably like four dollars but it's really nice and i like the texture i like the color everything and i think it it came together quite nicely it looks really nice and cohesive with all the other stuff that i did here in the middle of the of the patio of the side patio and i just hope that it gives you ideas Guys, I'm also working on an ebook for kitchen remodeling. If you guys need tips, tricks, and just all like the information that I've gathered during the years I, that I've been doing this, and it's gonna be available for you pretty soon. So I also have my 2024 Christian planner with Bible verses and just beautiful designs inside that can help you with your everyday tasks and. Um, there's so much more. I have an Etsy shop which I will also be starting to put all my work, my woodwork as well. So things like this will be there. And yeah, those are just some of the ways that you can support this channel to help it grow and that I can keep doing things like this to give you ideas and just to help you out in any way that I can. And remember to please like, subscribe, comment, share, everything <laughs> i really thank you for all your support and for watching and i'll see you in the next one god bless you guys bye, -bye.